Welcome to part 12 of the advanced Revit course. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to create internal elevations. And we're also going to look at using view templates, which will save you a lot of time as well as allow you to have some consistency in the graphics of your projects. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Alright, so we've just finished up with the legends and schedules and you're probably feeling pretty flat after that because schedules aren't exactly the most exciting thing to do in Revit or in architecture. But that makes me want to do something a little bit more creative, a little bit more engaging. So what we're going to be doing is creating some internal elevations. This is that same project that we referenced before and you can see that we've got internal elevations of the four walls in the kitchen. And then what you also see is that we've got a kitchen layout page and this is going to have just a, you know, a short little axonometric or isometric 3D view of the kitchen isolated from everything else. And this is using a section box. And then we've got this little part plan of just the kitchen, which I'll also show you how to do as well. You can also see I've got a similar thing with the lounge setup. Um, there's also a 3D living room axo of that space and with these little part plans I like to call them This is where you'll start to play around with dimensioning all of these um, Individual and specific spaces again. You can see all of the master bedroom internal um, Elevations and then we've got a 3D axo of the master bedroom and then a part plan of it as well we've got the same thing going on. We've got the ensuite in internal elevations, but here we've got those four um, internal elevations on the same page as a axonometric drawing of that ensuite as well as a part plan as well. And zooming in just on this part plan, you can see how it's at a bigger scale than the normal 1 to 100 plan. And that's giving us the ability to, I guess, annotate a few more of these things and add in the dimensions so that we're not chucking all of this just on the normal ground floor plan. The bathroom sheet also has the four internal elevations, the 3D view and the part plan, as well as the laundry. So I'll usually do this for most projects because it does help break it up. Rather than showing, as I've mentioned, everything on the ground floor plan, you can already see that it's got way too many dimensions and it's gonna have a lot of annotations on it. So it's a good way to break up the model and to break up your documentation set by having these little part plans and 3Ds of just specific spaces. So I'm going to use the close inactive views button so that we can get rid of all of the other inactive views that we're not using. Just to clean it up, we're going to go back to our project and what we're going to do is start to play around with some internal elevations. We're going to go ahead and create these different types of sheets. So I'm going to go to the ground floor plan and still you can see that we haven't you know, cleaned up these drawings yet and I promise me we're getting to that. It's going to be more towards the end of the course when we start to stylize it and make it look really nice. But what we're going to do is turn this games room into its own sheet. So we're going to have four internal elevations of each four of the walls and then we're going to have a 3D axo of this space as well as that part plan so that we can start to dimension some of the furniture and the joinery inside of this um, space. So First things first, to create an internal elevation, we want to go to the view tab and we're going to be just using the normal elevation button like we usually would. And you can see that it's kind of tying and going towards whatever wall is closest. You can see the pointer or the marker for the elevation wants to point at a specific wall. I'm just going to place it at the bottom here facing this bottom wall. It doesn't really matter where we place it. You can see we wouldn't want to place it on an angle like this because then we've got um, an internal elevation looking at the corner of a wall, which isn't really making sense. So we want it to be parallel with the wall. As you can see, it is here. So to select that internal elevation, what we want to do is just open up that view. And you can do that by selecting that marker or that arrow pointing there. And you can define where it's being cut from. And you can see that it's only going to be cutting from the inside of those walls, which is good because internal elevations don't show structure they're not cutting through anything they're just showing i guess the face of a wall so let's go to this view and see what it looks like i'm just going to right click that elevation market and go to the elevation view you can see that it's showing us that curtain wall at the end there and the door and that brick wall and so that's pretty much everything we need to show now we can obviously clean this up a bit and make it look a bit more presentable 
Let's just bring out this crop box. I just selected that crop box on the corner there. If I bring this out, you can see what else is around it. So you can see it's currently cutting at the bottom of that ceiling. You can see that's the ground floor ceiling line there. And so that's where we do want it to cut from because again, we don't want it to show any structure. So an internal elevation usually will go all the way up to the ceiling and then it will go to the interior faces of the walls. And again, you wouldn't really show the floor. So you would bring this up where the floor is like that. So already we've got an internal elevation of that, I think it's south wall. If we go back to our floor plan, you might think that you'd have to create an elevation marker for each of these walls and start placing them around like that. But that's not the only way to do this. The right way to do this is by selecting this elevation here. And you're gonna see these little check marks, these little tick boxes on the other west, north and east faces of this elevation. If I check them on, you're gonna see that new markers are being placed where I tick them on. So now you can see that it's got four different markers and they've all got an elevation assigned to those markers. This one here, I just selected that point and you can see that it's currently cutting something very weird. If I go to this elevation view, you're gonna see that it's not showing everything that we want it to. Now what we could do is adjust the crop boundary in this view and we can pull it out until we reach the end of that wall. Or if I undo that, what I can do is go back to my floor plan, select that marker and then pull it out in this ground floor plan view. And we would want it to be aligned with the interior face of that wall there. Now the issue is, if we go to that elevation view, you're going to see that it's cutting through the couch weirdly, and we don't want that. So going back to the ground floor plan, if we select that elevation marker again, we just wanna pull that forward until it's just in front of that west wall on this side here, because we don't need to show any of this other stuff. It's just going to be pointing towards that west wall. Now, if we have a look at this elevation, you're gonna see that it doesn't cut through the couch. We've got the two shelves here. You've got this big wall void that's there, that big niche uh, wall kind of thing. You got the TV and the TV stand and the door there. You're also gonna see that cornice up there in the top. That's what that is there. And the beam running through across the ceiling. Now that is being cut in this view and that's fine, but usually you wouldn't really show those kind of elements. Now for the floor, I'm just gonna bring this up to the ground floor level, and there we go. If we have a look at our other elevations, you'll see that this top one is being cut way too far back. It should be up towards the end there. And we could put it just behind that jukebox there so that it's just showing that back wall. Or what we might do is actually just bring it in front of the jukebox so that we can see it um, in that elevation view like that. And so again, I'm just gonna pull up this crop boundary onto the ground floor level. These levels and section markers will touch up very shortly when we start looking at view templates, but we're just gonna make sure that we've got all of these views set for now. So this elevation marker again is too far back and it's also not showing what we want it to show. This one I might actually bring back behind the couch and I'm just gonna bring this across to that door there. And I'm gonna bring this in line with that wall now let's have a look and see what this one looks like. If we go to this elevation view, you're gonna see that the couch is, I believe, being cut through a bit weirdly. If I lift up this crop boundary, it's already gonna clean it up a lot. We can have a play around with what this looks like later, but for now, I think that looks pretty cool. What we wanna do is start adding this to a number of sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sheet, go into the project browser and go new sheet, use that same title block and sheet size that we had before. And we're going to rename this games room internal elevations. And I'm just going to capitalize all of that. And I'm going to make this under the number 400 and we'll call it 400 internal elevations. So we've got a new organization of internal elevations in our project browser. Now the number of the sheet is wrong. So we now need to call this a400 because it's the first internal elevation drawing. And now we can start placing those internal elevations onto this sheet. So the first one there, we've just placed on there. The second one we'll place in here and C we'll put below it. And then this one here we can place below or the B. Now obviously these aren't to the right scale. So we're gonna have to edit that first. Before we do that, I'm just going to rename all of these. I'm gonna call this games room internal elevation one, 
And then I'm just going to copy that and then rename the rest of these and call it Games Room Internal Elevation 2 and so forth. 3 and rename this one to number 4. All right. Now I'm just going to select all of these and change the viewport title to have no line because that's how we like it. Now what we're going to want to do is the scale and we're going to make these probably more like 1 to 20. Let's see how big they become. I think that's a pretty good size for them. So I'm just going to reorganize these across the drawing or across the sheet. And then some of these labels are going to have to move. For now, all we're wanting to do is just get these onto a sheet. All right, so there we go. We've got our four games room internal elevations on this sheet now, which looks good. What I'm not liking is that it's showing section cuts or these section markers through all of the internal elevations. Now, what we can do is hide them in each view but that can be way too time consuming. We're also gonna have issues then if we change our mind and decide that we do wanna show them on the internal elevations. So surely we can set up a template so that we can make a change to this internal elevation and then it shares that change with all of the other internal elevations within the project. In fact, we can do that with view templates. If I select this viewport here, this games room internal elevation one, and I scroll down to the view template under identity data in the properties panel. You'll see that it's got no view template currently assigned to it. If we click on that none button, what we can do is create a new or we can choose a preset here from the architectural template and we can assign a view template to this view. If we select the architectural elevation, it's gonna come up with a whole list of different parameters and values which are assigned to the view. If I apply this view template, you're going to see that all of the values of the parameters in this preset view template, all of those values are going to be assigned to this view. So you saw that one of those parameters was that the view scale is at a scale of one to 100. You're also going to see that the detail level is set as coarse and there's a few other things as well. So just like that, we've changed the style of this internal elevation with the click of one button. And we could do the same thing if we wanted that same style for this internal elevation. We could go to view template and assign that same architectural elevation preset and apply it to that view as well. And you're gonna see that now puts it at a scale of one to 100 and it's going to have a coarse detail level which you can see down here. But what you'll see is that now if we want to change the scale of this view, we can't actually do that from the bottom down here. All of these things are being assigned through the view template. And so if you wanted to change the scale of this view, you would have to change the scale of the view template. So I'm gonna come down to that view template. If I change the scale to one to 20, like we had before, and I apply that, you're going to see that that's gonna change the scale of these two drawings back to one to 20. They still have that view template assigned, but we've just changed the scale of both of them from that one place. But I don't actually like that view template. It's a default Revit template, so it's not the best. But what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this and make my own template. And I'm going to call this internal elevation. And what I usually like to do is put my name before it just to show that this is in fact something I've created and not something that Revit has created. So already you can see that it's taken the information from that um, view and it's created a template from it. The view scale is set for 1 to 20. The display model is set to normal. The detail level is set to coarse. We could make this fine if we wanted to. I'm just going to press OK and now I'm going to set that same internal elevation view template to all three of these other views. So if I come down to the view template with all three of them selected, I can go click on the KS internal elevation and I'm going to apply this to those views. And you won't see much change, but that is now applied those view templates to them. So if I wanted to change the scale of this in here, it won't actually let me. I would have to come down to the view template and change it in this mode. If I change the view scale to 1 to 50 in the view template and apply it, you'll see that it affects all of those internal elevations. This is a really good and effective way of changing the style of all of your drawings. For all of the projects I work on, I have a whole number of different view templates that are set up for me so that if I have my ground floor plans, all I need to do is just assign the view template to the floor plan and it's going to automatically change all of these settings for me.
So now what we can do with this view template, we can also change the visibility graphics override settings. And that's this VG override model here. So whenever we press VV, that's going to bring up this visibility graphic override settings. But what we can do is change that instead from this view template. And by doing so, what we can do is edit that. We can go to the annotation categories and we can search for sections. We don't want the sections to show in these internal elevations. So I'm just going to untick it and that's just unticking its visibility. And now if I apply that, you're going to see that the sections are going to disappear on all of the internal elevations. So rather than going through each of these internal elevations to remove that those section markers and hide them away, I've just done it with the click of one button by having this assigned to the internal elevation view template. Now this is also a way to graphically control these internal elevations. Let's say that we wanted the model display to be shaded. I can edit that and change the style to shaded, click apply, and you'll see that they all become shaded models now. But obviously that doesn't look very good, so I'm gonna keep it them all as hidden line and apply that. And you can see it's changing the settings for all of these views. So when I start a new project, I'll always have view templates set up inside of my new template. These templates will be set up for the floor plans, elevations, the sections, the internal elevations, 3D views, all of this sort of stuff. I'll have them all set up so that I can just change the settings of them all with the click of one button. This will make sure that you've got a consistent graphic to your drawings and so that they all look the same rather than changing the settings on just one drawing and then they don't represent in other drawings. So I'm going to go back to this other project of mine. I'm going to look at the view template, which is this internal elevation template, which is um, very similar to what we've got in our project that we've just made. But what you're going to see is that I've got a few changes in the visibility override graphic settings. You're going to see that the patterns of all the ceilings are grayed out. So they're grayed out as a solid fill. This is something that I like to do to show things like the bulkheads or stuff like that in a gray rather than a white. You'll also see that I've unticked and ticked different parts of the project. You can see that planting is not visible in the internal elevations because I don't need to see the planting in the, in the distance. You'll see that my walls, they have projection lines and patterns that are different. The color of the surface patterns of walls are actually a lighter color rather than being black. And this helps just make it a bit more readable. You'll see that the cut patterns and the cut lines for the walls are also different. If there are walls being cut through, you'll see them as a darker gray. If we go to the annotation categories, you'll also see a few different changes in here as well. You'll see that the grids are half toned. So they're not super bold. They're just kind of there in the distance, but their color has been halved. So they're a mid gray rather than a black. So it's definitely worth setting up some view templates for yourself. And from doing so, you'll be able to create your own architectural graphics and your own visualization style in your Revit drawings. So that's just a quick introduction to view templates. But once we start to stylize this project, I'll show you how you can use the view template in a lot better and more efficient way to stylize your drawings. But we still want to create this part plan and a 3D axo of this games room. So let's go ahead and do that. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to create a detailed plan and a section axonometric drawing. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.